Meet 23-year-old Roxanne Russell. I love spending money, yes. She's dedicated her life to dressing like Hollywood royalty. I've just got to have it. If I've got it, I want it. In a less than glamorous receptionist job with the local council, Roxanne earns just £12,000 a year. That's J-Lo's annual manicure bill. And her cravings for celebrity clobber come at a price. In just two years, Roxanne's racked up an unfashionable 14 grand debt, more than a whole year's salary. Oh my God, what have I done? Do it again. All I was a little fun. Do it again. Money doesn't really mean anything to me. I just think of it as just papers and numbers. Roxanne wants to turn her passion for A-list fashion into a new career. But the reality of her debt means she's stuck in a rut and heading for Skid Row. I started to have a lot of uh, threatening letters from bailiffs and things. I think I've got about five county court judgments now. This young girl needs help. I keep trying to stop myself and thinking I don't need it. But I just, it's the only thing that makes me feel happy. Over the next four weeks, lifestyle expert Jay Hunt will put the brakes on the spending. We are going to have to think about this whole shoe addiction. You've got to learn to be giving something up in order to get something back. And psychological coach Benjamin Fry will unleash the demons behind her obsession. Yeah! <laughs> no? No. It's really hard, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Roxanne's spending is at crisis point. Her fantasy shopping needs a huge dose of reality. I feel like this is my last chance, really. I need to get out of this so I can have a good life, have a happy life. Roxanne, a celebrity-obsessed 23-year-old, has always been the baby of her family. When I was younger, I was definitely spoiled by my sisters and my mom and my dad, because I was the baby, the princess. And nothing's changed. What baby wants, baby gets. As soon as I see Misha Barton or Lindsay Lohan wearing something that I want, like a nice handbag, I definitely have to have it. If Hollywood A-listers are wearing it, then Roxanne from the West Midlands has to have it too, whatever it costs. I feel like I'm in a private club or something, the same as them, because we've got this same fabulous, amazing bag. This is one of my favourites. This is a Fendi Spy. Brought this because Misha Barton had it and it cost me £500, um, but I didn't care, I just had to have it. And it doesn't stop there. 60 Hollywood heels, 30 of them still box fresh. Nicole Richie had some quite similar to these. Um, and I've never actually worn them, but I do love them. All this effort and expense, and yet Roxanne rarely leaves the house she shares with her older sister, Esther. After leaving sixth form college, her two best friends moved away, and Roxanne drifted into the first job that came along. Since then, she's lived in a fantasy world. When not shopping from work, she dedicates hours to perfecting her celebrity look. Two years ago, she discovered a way to fund her obsession. It's just been so easy to get credit at the beginning. I was being sent credit cards and offers for loans. I'd just go into a shop, pick up a hairband or something, and then they'd say, oh, do you want a store card? So I'd end up having a store card and just almost maxing it out on that day. Trouble is, her 12 grand salary simply can't keep up. She hasn't made a single debt repayment in a year and her plastic's in meltdown. I can't get any credit now. I can't get any store cards or an, even an overdraft or anything like that. So every payday, when I get paid, I just draw almost all my cash out and just spend it on what I want. Barely out of her teens, Roxanne's 14 grand debt is a huge millstone around her neck. I just feel like I'm going nowhere and I'm doing a job that I don't really enjoy. I don't have any passion for and I just do feel... I feel trapped by my debt. But Roxanne's still got a get-out-of-jail-free card. Her long-suffering sisters regularly sub her to the tune of £300 every month. The entire family bail Roxanne out from month to month. She's not growing up to realise you can't have what you want unless you've got the money to actually have it. The family have been pushed to breaking point and need to call a halt. I am very worried about Roxanne because I wonder what is going to happen in the next few years. Despite her family's fears, Roxanne continues to shop. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> but her future won't be lovely if she doesn't stop now.
Roxanne rents a room from her eldest sister Esther in the sleepy town of Bewdley near Birmingham. While they're both out, Benjamin and Jay have borrowed the keys to the house to hunt down clues to Roxanne's spending addiction. Ah, oh, shoe girl! <laughs> oh, One for you, Jay. I know. Quite a lot of shoes and we all quite it. similar. Those two, the red mm -hmm. and black, are the same pair of shoes, just in different colours, but from as seen on screen. What is on as there? seen on screen? A website that's really popular. Really? And what it shows you is what celebrities have been wearing. Ooh. So if you see a celebrity and you want to ah, have a look that nice they're, thing. you know, Victoria Beckham, Misha Barton, all ah. these sort of girls that, you know, the aspirational girls. Ah, oh, see, look, the bags. You know the bags bore me senseless. I know, thing. but what you should know about bags, Benjamin, is that they're incredibly expensive when they're Chanel Fendi. I know, I remember. I've learned so much from you. It's this, Benjamin, is a Fendi spy bag. You keep your secret codes in the handle, don't you? Well, this is the one that all the celebrities have. So oh, it's become it? a must-have thing with young girls. But the problem is, yeah. it's a bag of the season for one season, and then you've got to buy something else. Here, lift up this. I bet there's more in here. Oh, oh yeah. my God, bags of bags. It's not just what she's wearing, but what she's watching that gives them the clues to this girl's obsession. But they're all quite young. Yeah. The OC, Buffy... Cusp sort of... of teen to adult. Yeah. Maybe she's having trouble breaking out of teenage years into adulthood. This is where she lives her life, in this kind of area of fantasy where everything's perfect and lovely and wonderful and everyone's beautiful and nothing bad happens. In OC world, yeah, the sun exactly. always shines, yeah. everybody's on the beach in great shorts. Who wouldn't want to be Misha Barton? You'll be you. The bedroom's got the bling, but it's Big Sister's living room where Jay finds the financial impact of Roxanne's runaway spending. Look at that. Notice of intended litigation. <laughs> That's real. Contempt of court order. Oh, my God. He may be sent to prison. Solicitor's letter. Oh, look. This is where she's obviously put all her debts from all her credit cards mm -hmm. into one account. Total £14,171.97p. Right, I'm going to take all of this. Well, she's really far gone. She's already getting demands from the court and from solicitors and stuff. Now armed with the full horror of Roxanne's excesses, Jay and Benjamin need to shake this girl out of her fantasy life. Time for celeb-obsessed Roxanne to face up to her spending. To ram home their message, Jay and Benjamin are about to give her the red carpet treatment. Is this all right with yeah, you? Yeah, yeah you like okay. a limo? Right. A bit of limo? Yeah. We're going to a celebrity do. Really? Yeah, mm. black tie bash and everything. Oh. Is that all right? Yeah, great. Do you like Brilliant. that sort of thing? Yeah. Is that up your yeah. street? Nearly there. Look, Jay. Celebrity mm. city. I'm bringing sexy back. Roxanne's accelerated spending over the last two years has given her a front row seat at this star studded event. Welcome to the annual Spenderholics Awards. And the nominations for Biggest Spender are for her role in Handbag Queen, she's impressed the judges by spending a staggering £3,850 on celebrity inspired handbags. Roxanne Russell. The next nomination is for her heartwarming portrayal of a girl out of control, a whopping spend of £4,035 on shoes. It's none other than Roxanne Russell. And the final nomination for this category is a love story between a girl and her wardrobe. A staggering spend of £4,038 on clothes. She's nominated again. It's Roxanne Russell. And the winner is, if you'd like to reveal, Benjamin. Roxanne Russell! Young Roxanne Russell, the 12,000 a year receptionist from Bewdley, has swept the board in every single category. Well done, Roxanne! Well done. 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 Well done.
Okay, all right. Now, Roxanne, you have absolutely wowed the judges in this category by spending in under two years on bags, shoes, and clothes a whopping eleven thousand nine hundred and twenty-three pounds. Oh my god! <laughs> oh dear! My mum would go mad. <laughs> That's almost <laughs> one year's salary. Are you looking forward to your career going from strength to strength from here, or do you think maybe it's time to hang up your spending boots? I think it's time to quit now. Mm. Putting all the pantomime aside, would you really like some help? I really would, yes. OK, well, that's what we're here for. It's the wake-up call Roxanne needs, but the road to recovery isn't going to be easy. She needs to go cold turkey. <laughs> It's over to Jay and Benjamin to set a weekly budget. Do you have any idea of how much money you get through in an average week? Probably about £100 a week. You might be surprised to know that in an average week, you get through £241. That's £45 more than her weekly wage and doesn't even include a minimum payment to her credit agency. Right. I didn't even realise I had that much. Is that more than you thought? <laughs> yeah, a lot more than you I thought. You must be borrowing a lot more than you yeah, thought from your yeah, family. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Reality's a hard pill to swallow. If Roxanne wants to change, she needs a taste of life without spending. For the next seven days, what we'd like to actually give you is £35. You've obviously got to eat for a week, you've got to get to work and back, and that has got to cover all of that. So all your luxuries your magazines, your spending on the internet, fashion purchases, all of that, there'll be absolutely nothing for wow. seven days. How do you feel about that? Um, pretty worried. I uh, don't really know how I'm going to cope with just that. Because um, I'll probably just spend that on a hairband or something. Ridiculous. So, yeah, I suppose we'll see. I think that today has been a real reality moment for Roxanne. She's never really sat and confronted the fact that she has this terrible debt. How she's going to get out of it, I don't know. It really depends on whether she's willing to work with us and enter into the real world and leave behind all her celebrity fantasy friends. We'll have to see. I was really shocked about that. I just don't know where it's all gone. I've never budgeted before in my life. <clears throat> never. I've never even tried, so it'll be interesting. It's the first day of cold turkey, and big sister Esther knows that if Roxanne's going to make it through the week, then the sponging has to stop now. How are you? A bit proud of what I want to do with that £35. <laughs> do you think that you're going to manage on it, though? I'll have to. I'm, I'm going to really give it a good go. Without buying £50 shoes from Topshop. Yeah. Well, I've got them the same in grey, so I probably could do without the red ones and see what happens. So. And we've got to try not to help you out, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't borrow any money or anything, so... No, well, I wouldn't lend you any money anyway. Roxanne heads to the local shop, determined to save money by cooking from scratch. It's a far cry from her usual habit of buying snacks and takeaways that mount up to 60 quid a week. So far, so good. But a mere two hours later, temptation strikes. Roxanne squanders a further seven pounds on fashion magazines. A worrying 40% of her budget has bitten the dust on day one. I tried to budget a bit, but I don't think I've done very well, really. It seems a bit mad that I've spent that much already, so I'm a bit worried, but I'm just going to think about it a bit more tomorrow. Monday morning and having blown almost half her cold turkey budget, Roxanne's determined to get back on the straight and narrow. She's up early to swap shop-bought lunch for homemade. I've made that tuna and sweet corn pasta salad. Looks really boring. It tastes really boring, to be honest. Um, but it's, I mean, I normally spend five pounds on lunch. So when I go to work, I buy like ready-made pasta salad or something. I mean, it's only cost me about 70p. That's quite shocking, really. I don't, never really thought of it like that. The drive to work gives her time to consider the potential pitfalls for the day ahead. 
at work, I actually have the internet on my computer and I tend to go on to uh, some websites um, to shop and things quite a lot. But then I always have um, email alerts telling me what's new in and what everybody's buying at the moment and things. So I think that'll be quite hard. I might try and cancel those if I can. I think I'm going to try not to go into town on my lunch breaks this week as well. Um, because there's just odd little shops there with clothes in and things. And I, no matter where I go, I always end up buying something. Three hours later, Roxanne can't resist the lure of the shops she loves. Temptation is everywhere. There are some boots that I really like, and they're on sale, uh, but maybe next week. Roxanne doesn't succumb but foregoing a retail fix sends her good mood crashing down. This afternoon, since I got home, I felt a bit miserable again and just a bit down and everybody, like my family, and everybody's just been going on about money, a bit panicky about what's going to happen, what I'm going to do with my life, really. Currently, Roxanne equates feeling happy with filling shopping baskets. If she wants a long-term solution to her addiction, she needs to start unearthing the reasons behind it. Psychological coach Benjamin Fry calls her for a meeting to discuss her compulsion. I seem to have gotten a lot of debt. Mm -hmm. I um, started going shopping pretty much every day on my lunch break and mm -hmm. after work, and pretty much, you know, until the shop's closed. Yeah, you enjoy it? Uh, I did, yeah. I was really happy, actually, at that point, <laughs> really. Um, so, and it just spiralled out of control, I think, really. And how do you feel when you're making those purchases? I don't think about anything else. Um, I just completely zone out. So what is the anything else that you think about when you're not shopping? Um, just, um, I think about my mum a lot yeah. when I'm not shopping. Roxanne's mum died of colon cancer two years ago. During her year-long illness, Roxanne shared the care with her two older sisters. I think I almost found shopping as um, a way of um, cutting myself off from that, really. That was your way of saying, OK, I'm just going to make this completely about me and what I'm interested in. Yeah. Did you ever feel angry with your mother for being ill? No, I never felt angry with Mum. Well, we might need to think about that, because um, as uncharitable as it sounds, it is a normal part of the grieving process to be angry. And I say this because spending money you don't have is, can often feel a bit rebellious. How would she feel about you being this way with your money? She'd be really mad with me, mm. yeah. That's an interesting thing to realise, mm. because if you needed to be angry with your mum and you couldn't be, it's a good way to kind of just mm. twist the knife a bit. I, I sometimes also feel guilty for um being here when Mum had obviously lived to be here now mm. and I'm not really doing anything with my life or I don't go out or anything, I just... Sure. Yeah. And, like, Mum had obviously killed to be here, really, and uh, I sometimes think, you know, she did uh, probably did more with her life than I have. Like, she'd be a lot more useful. <laughs> Do you ever wish she'd taken you with her? Um, I sometimes wish I'd gone instead of her. Mm. Why? Roxanne takes time out to compose herself before restarting the session. How do you feel to, you know, to cry in front of people? I don't really like it. I don't, mm. You know, with my sisters, I always try not to cry. Why know? is that? I don't know, really. I just... I always feel like I want to try and be brave. Well, it's a habit that I think you should try and get out of. Mm -hmm. If you can't externalise these very strong, very hard feelings in front of people, then you are left very lonely and in a very dark place on your own. I think what we can do together is we can manage the legacy of your mother's life and death in a different way. How is she remembered? We had her cremated, mm -hmm. then we had her ashes split between the three of us. And you've still got yours? Yeah. What would you like to do with those ashes? I quite like holding on to them, really. I feel like that she's still sort of a bit of her there, really. Essentially, she needs help grieving for her mother. She needs to reclaim the time 
when she would have been able to feel and grieve that loss, but she had to surrender to take care of her mother while she was dying. And I think that's something that I hope to be able to help her with. Whether or not she's ready for that right now, whether she can begin to let go, I don't know. I just feel now really, really quite relieved that, I mean, there's things that I've been thinking, um, certain things I've been thinking for over the last two, three years, um, that I've never told anybody, never really thought I'd tell anybody. Um, and it feels really good that I have. Roxanne's got three days to go on her cold turkey budget. She's determined to save her remaining £11 for a night out with Esther at the end of the week. Looks like no supper tonight. You finished with that, then? Yeah, I have, yeah. Can I have some? Mm -hmm. But the next day, it's all for nothing, as Roxanne's forgotten to budget for petrol to get to work. Now, with less than two pounds to her name, Roxanne's planned night out could be a sober affair. I'll probably just have one soft drink, and that's going to be about it. Cheers. Cheers. Three drinks later, Roxanne's not touched her remaining budget. But she can't blag off Esther's friends all night. Instead of going home, as usual, she turns to Big Sis to bail her out. Go on, then up you go. She's overspent on her cold turkey budget, and her older sister's patience is wearing thin. She's going to have to pay me the ten pounds back out of her money next week. People will be tolerant to a level. She's not going to be twenty-three forever. She's not going to be the baby forever. It's not going to go on forever. Someone's going to expect her to buy a drink back. After last night's excesses, the next morning finds Roxanne despondent. I'm really bored, to be honest. I'd normally be shopping today. That's all I do, really, is shop. I suppose this is how it's got to be. This is how it should have been for a long time, just not shopping, really. <clears throat> I don't really know what I'd do <laughs> to fill my time when I'm not shopping. Maybe that's something I need to think about. I might go to bed, actually. Nothing else to do, really. Roxanne's made it through cold turkey week, but it's not been easy. Back in the real world, Jay's going to set her a realistic budget, but first she has to face some tough questions. What you have done, which is a good thing, was you put all your loans into one big yeah. pot, didn't you? Yeah, that's it, yeah. But you haven't paid them. No. Why haven't you paid them? Just every month, um, I'd have problems with direct debit, so then I'd just think, oh, I'll just pay it next month or pay extra next month. And I just never got round to it. Each month it ends up, I just end up not bothering. And, and, and what do you think is going to happen when you continue not to pay them? Um, I think eventually I'll end up, uh, they'll take it a lot further than they have. We're going to get you to start paying it now from the zero that you're doing at the moment to £250 a month. OK. By doing this, Roxanne should shed her £14,000 debt in five years. But to do that, Jay's had to make cuts where it hurts. Guess where? On the clothes. We have cut that to absolutely nothing. OK. I, I can give it a try, yeah. Uh, sounds like um, it's quite scary, really, to think about. The reason it is so drastic is because you have been spending yeah. such a huge amount. I'll just try and wear the clothes that I've never worn mm. before and things like that and just... Um, sometimes wear the same things twice, I suppose. What Benjamin and I both feel with you is that the, the more you can actually live your life in reality, the happier and better off yeah. you're going to be. And what worries me is that it's such a huge amount yeah. on clothes yeah. that it's stopping you know, the, the spending that you should be doing yeah. for Roxanne in her real life in Budley. Yeah. Not Roxanne in her head, what am I going to wear tomorrow when yeah. I'm on the red carpet with Misha Barton down Sunset Boulevard. 
it's not all gloom. Jay has a radical solution to help Roxanne stay on budget. So I think the first time we've done this on Spendaholics is actually increase your going out budget. Because at the moment, you're spending £50. Now, we want that to go up okay. to £100 because what we really think is that if you are actually out socialising and with friends and enjoying mm. yourself, it's actually going to be cheaper for you to spend that amount every month going out than yeah. it is staying in and reverting to all okay. the fancy shopping that goes on when you're on your own yeah. or you're on the computer or yeah. you've got nothing to do. I think, yeah, I think I need to start going out a lot more and enjoying myself really rather than sitting at home and looking at my clothes. The more we can get you living in the real world, I think the better off you're going to be. Yeah. I'm really worried after that budget chat with Roxanne today because she seems quite compliant, but I just don't think that she has any idea of what reality is. She's consistently sponging off her family. She doesn't seem to worry about that. She's set up this consolidated debt, but yet she hasn't made a payment in a year. And what I'm really worried about is the minute she feels upset or the minute she feels pressured, she's not going to stick to buying no clothes for six months and a bender is on its way. To keep Roxanne away from the lure of the high street, Jay's come up with a plan. She wants to get her thinking creatively about how she uses her time and her new going out budget. What I've been thinking about is trying to get something in your life that's going to replace all of this sort of obsession with the celebrities and sitting at home watching the OC. So what I brought you here today to do is an art class. How do you feel about that? Um, yeah, great. I really enjoyed art when I did it. Because you did it at so. school, yeah, didn't you? Yeah. And we're quite and good at it. it. Yeah. I don't know about that, but uh, <laughs> I enjoyed it. So it's well within your budget and something you could afford to do on a regular basis. Okay, great. So I'm going to send you in there and hopefully you might get back in the art vibe. Okay. So off you go. Okay. Don't look worried. It's going to be fun. A night in alone surfing celebrity websites sometimes saw Roxanne spending £500 on a handbag. A course like this at her local art college means she can get out of the house and meet people for a mere tenner. What's that you're doing? I don't know. It's <laughs> very expressive, that's the Is it really? Saying. Does it mean I'm angry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It does. You have serious issues. <laughs> yeah. I actually really enjoyed that and I didn't think about shopping at all while I was doing it and I really got into it. I did feel quite shy um, at first but um, I think it is quite easy to talk to people here because everybody's doing the same thing. It's great, uh, I'd definitely do it again, uh, join a class sort of closer to home. It's a new hobby rather than shopping I think. <laughs> Roxanne's made a positive start with her new budget. It's been a week since her first session with Benjamin, where she admitted being deeply depressed since the death of her mother. Roxanne's parents split when she was two. She was brought up by her mum, Joni, and they were inseparable. When Roxanne was 19, Joni was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, but just six months later, it was discovered to be inoperable cancer. Roxanne feels strongly that if the cancer had been detected earlier, the outcome might have been different. Roxanne was bereft and unable to move on. Roxanne worried me a bit because she seemed to be in a really dark place. And I do think sometimes people get that way because they're not in touch with the dynamic, if difficult, emotions that help us all get out of those dark places. And one of the key emotions to do that is anger. Benjamin has come up with a physical method to help Roxanne release some of the feelings of rage that she suppresses by shopping. To reach these buried emotions, he's devised an exercise that could have potentially explosive results. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to work with you on your anger. OK. You remember that beast? Yeah. So I've got some tools of rage here for okay. you. Here's one of them. This is your classic baseball bat. And what I'm going to ask you to get angry with is this target here. OK. Now, you do have things that you are angry about, mm. don't you? My mum's illness, I think, yeah. is the main one, really. OK. Um, yeah, and the doctors. The doctors. Well, here's your chance. Piece of paper, pen. Maybe you'd like to write down doctors. OK. I want you to post this message 
in that post box over there. Okay. All right? Really think about it. And when you get back here, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. You're just going to come back, okay. worked up, pick up the bat and smack the target. Okay. Benjamin believes a vital part of the grieving process is externalising feelings of anger, however unreasonable, towards those you blame for your loss. Harder! Screaming! <laughs> oh, <the f> <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know jump. <laughs> Very good. How does that feel? Emotional, really. Bit teary. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that behind the anger is actually quite a lot of sadness? Yeah. Quite a lot of emotion? Yeah, I do. Now, what I'm worried about is that you're carrying that explosion around inside of you. Mm. And that instead of exploding on the outside, all it can do is explode on the inside. Mm. Sometimes I'm just so angry and I just end up just thinking, oh, just calm down, I end up going to bed. Yeah. Or, you Instead know, of exploding, yeah, you go to, to bed. Suppress it and just... OK, so what we're doing here today, we're giving you a different thing to do. Having established the exercise, Benjamin wants to push Roxanne to a difficult place. I want you to think about your mum. And anything about her that you might be angry with. Well, I don't feel that I am. I've never okay. felt angry with just, mum. Just, just go with me. It's an experiment, that's all. She reluctantly writes the one person she refuses to be angry with. Just pick up the bat. If there's anything that you feel any anger about, you let go. If there isn't, you don't have to do it. OK. Um, I only really feel angry that she was taken away from me, but that's not her fault. Okay. No, it's not her fault. But it's something you're angry about. Yeah. Give that some go. Scream. <laughs> Yeah, go on, shout, yell! Oh yell! Oh no? No. It's really hard, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. You all right? Yeah. It's OK. It's OK, let it go. When you were hitting that cushion, if we're really honest, you felt that you were angry with your mother for leaving you, didn't you? It's the hardest part of it, isn't it? You wish you didn't feel like that? Yeah. Because it feels so disloyal. <laughs> the thing is, you've got a choice between accepting and facing up to how angry you feel with your mum for leaving you or sleeping all day long. I wish you think she'd want for you. She probably want me to. She'd rather I was angry. You give us another go for me. Come on, this is where we really need to be. Scream! <laughs> oh! Well done, Roxanne. Thank you. Well Thanks. done. I think that was really successful for Roxanne. She managed to articulate the hardest part of grief of all, which is her anger with her mother for leaving her. I'm really proud of her. Pretty intense, really. Um, I didn't really realise I had that much anger. Um, and I just feel really dazed now, really, just a bit. It was good, though. It felt good. I feel quite sort of empty, really. During her session with Benjamin, Roxanne's had to confront some difficult emotions, and by morning, she deals with them in the only way she knows, by shopping. She's falling back into old habits, but as part of her budget, she's agreed to spend nothing on extras for six months. I don't really feel that guilty. I think um, I do sort of deserve it a bit. Roxanne will find it impossible to shift her 14 grand debt if she continues to use spending as a comforting crutch when she's down. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye, bye It's over to Jay to find an alternative and to rein in the habit that's been breaking the bank. Today, she's going to deal with Roxanne's four grand fetish for celeb-inspired shoes. Now, I just wanted to talk to you today about your shoes. One of the things that I've noticed is that they're not all the same size. Yeah. I've got sizes from 38 to 41, so yeah. that's, what, a 5 to an 8? Yeah. Um, some what of size them, are your feet? Uh, a 6 or a 5, usually. Right. But, um, a lot of them I've ended up buying from eBay or from online shops, and those are the only sizes they have. So I've just bought them and thought, oh, I'll... I don't know, do something. So like it's that. not about buying shoes to wear at all, is no, it? No, no. It's just about having them um, and knowing I've got them. And right. Just getting a lot of pleasure out of just looking at them. We are going to have to think about this whole shoe addiction because, yeah. you know, on your budget, there is no money. 
for buying things. So yeah. you're not going to be able to shop. If I could find you a way of swapping some of your shoes, would you be happy with that? Yeah, definitely. That yeah? sounds good. So what we're going to do now is get you to decide on what you're going to keep and what you're prepared to swap. Jay's discovered a website where Roxanne can get new shoes by exchanging her old ones. But first, she'll have to convince her to part with her precious collection. Swaps on the left, keeps on the right. Our swapping pile hasn't even started yet. Done? Yep. So that's 24 shoes that you're keeping and two that we're swapping. Yeah. OK, it's a start. What I want to show you is this site that I think is really great because what you can do on here is register the shoes that we're going to swap. They go online and then you can swap them for something else. Now, from my point of view, the obvious thing is to swap them for a pair of shoes that bloody fit, okay. that you could actually yeah. wear. Swapping websites have taken off in the UK and sites like this one make it easy. They charge a monthly fee plus a one-off payment of £2.50 per item. It's thrills without big bills and Roxanne's hooked. Within a week, she's had a successful swap. My new shoes have arrived, which I've swapped and that I didn't really want anymore for these. So I'm dying to see what they're like. Oh, I love them, they're great. Um, I actually swapped my red ones, which I don't even fit me. I've never worn. Um, and I got these for free, which is a bit mad, really, but really good. Jay's beginning to address Roxanne's overspending, but she's concerned she's still got a way to go. She hooks up with Benjamin to focus on the future. I get the sense that she doesn't have that much of a social life, job maybe, she could do something else. I mean, what I think I'm going to do with her is basically try and do some practical things, something that she can do to make her life better, rather than just this constant retreating into the magazines and the CDs and the DVDs and entering into that world. I think it's interesting that you feel that she's a bit cut off from things and people, because it's all very well after the literally kind of exploded her to open up to me, but is she going to open up to other people? Is she going to open up to her family? And I really think that that's going to be so crucial and important to her, particularly to those people closest to her. There is something quite vulnerable about her. I mean, I think she comes across as much younger than she actually is. Yeah, that is true. There, there's that sense in which she's kind of hanging on to her youth, and maybe the people around her are also hanging on to the idea of her being the baby, and mm -hmm. that's probably something I should address as well. Roxanne is 16 years younger than her oldest sister, Esther, and has always been treated as the baby. Benjamin suspects that Roxanne's spending is subconsciously linked to not wanting to grow up. He calls a meeting with Roxanne and Esther to explore the family dynamic. We all mother Roxanne, if you like, you know, all of us do. With that massive age gap, it's very difficult to not think of her as the little one. <laughs> the question for Roxanne is, do you want to be the baby? Um, sometimes I do quite like being the baby, and I just always think of myself as still being the baby, really. Okay. But I do think it is time that I sort of grew up and moved on and became responsible for myself. Here's an interesting thing. A baby communicates by basically crying. They're kind of a little bit annoying <laughs> on purpose. That's not quite no. the way it should be between two adults, no. which you are. Yeah. How do you cry? Um, I don't think I do, do I really? I <laughs> sleep. Um, OK, that's a good way to get attention. Moody. moody. Yeah, I'm quite moody, really. And just Irritable. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. angry. And I think spending is the one you've left out. Yeah. Spending is your yeah. way of screaming. Yeah. What you're not doing is screaming. Benjamin thinks Roxanne might benefit from opening up more to Esther. He asks her to share the dark thoughts she expressed in their first session. Well, I think one of the main things, the one thing that um, really sort of upset me and sort of was a, a real shot once I'd actually said it out to you out loud, was that sometimes I do feel like I don't want to be here um, and sort of like, um, it, I'd rather it was, I wish it was me rather than Mark. 
How do you feel hearing that? Well, it hurts really, doesn't it, you know? And especially like at 23, mm -hmm. when she has got so much to, to live for. She must have been despairing at times, really. You know, she must have really been hurting and we didn't appreciate that too much. Perhaps we did too much molly coddling and not enough really listening. You see, what I think adults really need is to be listened to, to be validated, to be heard, and then allowed to clean up their own mess. And I think what's been going on in a sense is that you're so afraid of the delicate state Roxanne's been in that you just want to alleviate the problem. So perhaps that's the, the starting point to just well, for you to know you can say what you want and for me to shut up a minute and listen, you know. And you could feel stronger because yeah, someone, yeah. Has, someone has treated you like a grown-up, so maybe you can feel like you can treat yourself like a yeah. grown-up. Yeah, I wouldn't feel like I needed to sort of um, sleep or shop or anything like that. Let's <laughs> ask a yeah, big hug. <laughs> <laughs> People have told me all my life that I've mothered Roxanne um, and I just didn't believe it ever. But when he pointed out that we've got a parent-child relationship and that it had got to change for us to be able to grow, uh, I found that really hard to take. I think more difficult than Roxanne. I think that's going to be a big eye-opener for both of us. Um, and I think it will improve things, but it's going to take a lot to break this habit. <laughs> Roxanne's come a long way with Benjamin and her family, but she still needs to replace her shopping addiction with something more fulfilling. Jay's found a way to give her the buzz of shopping without spending her own money. A potential career as a personal shopper could be the boost she needs. So this is an area which you like to work in, yeah, definitely. isn't it? Do you think you'd be good dealing with people? Do I you do, think you're quite yeah. a good people person? I definitely person? think so, because I help my sisters a lot with what they should wear and things like that, and they've got different body shapes and things. Yeah. And I'm always like careful of that. So I think, yeah, I think I could do it. <laughs> Jay's found Roxanne her first client, but can she cut it when the pressure is on to buy for others? A department store is the perfect place for Roxanne to try it out, with so many different styles under one roof. Now, Roxanne, Claire, our client, is waiting in here for you. OK, she's 22 years old, she's 5 foot 4, she's going to a friend's wedding, doesn't have a huge budget. Right. Be really confident and try and get as much information out of her as possible right. before you hit the rails. Otherwise, it's going to be a waste of time collecting the clothes if we're not right. really sure what she likes. Okay. Good okay, luck, great. off you go. Hello, Claire, Hiya. is it? Yeah, nice I'm Roxanne. Hiya. Nice to meet you. Um, right, so it's a wedding you're going to. Yeah. Is it? Okay. Um, and uh, uh, are you looking for a dress or a skirt? Dress or a skirt and top. It doesn't right. matter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and what sort of look are you wanting to go for? Is there a celebrity that you've got in mind that you like the style of? Sienna Miller. Right. A little bit more bohemian right. and loose. I don't really okay. do the tight, yeah. short thing. What about heels? How do you feel about high heels? Those? Good. Yeah. Okay. High the better. Right. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. Roxanne, lots of information out of her. Yeah. Feeling confident? Yeah, definitely. Okay, let's Great. grab a red and we can okay. go and get her some clothes. Great. The challenge is on. Today is all about the client's wants and desires, not Roxanne the Spinderholic. It's hard to sort of match it up with what she said, really. Um, so, but I think I'll be all right. I bought you a fuck When shopping for somebody else, budgets matter. I keep forgetting to look at prices. But sure, I like any of this. <laughs> Roxanne can't stick to her normal shopping schedule. I'm just a bit panicky. Time equals money. I haven't got much, and some of it I'm not really sure about. got a selection for you, oh, um, so whatever sort of catches your eye first, I think is good. This is really nice. Love this colour. And also I picked that because I thought that was quite nice and bright. She said you like bright colours. Yeah, I really like this. Oh, yeah. This and is... also there's the uh, slip oh, that was go underneath it. Oh, I'll try that on. That's um, really... How's it been? Is it quite stressful? Yeah, I thought it'd be a lot easier than that. Um, but, um, but I suppose it's just learning and mm. sort of 
getting into that sort of thing and a bit more experience. Do you think it was something that you'd feel satisfaction from? Definitely. I, did, I have really loved it. I mean, I've been a bit nervous and things. But yeah. I think, you know, so far so good. Yeah, it's not good. like she's hated everything no. on the rail. <laughs> I was worried about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was picking things up and thinking, oh, that'd be lovely for me. And I thought, oh, no, it's not for me. It's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, fingers crossed that she likes the stuff she's taken yeah. in. I oh, really like this. That looks I think really we've nice. got a winner. <laughs> really like it. I like that. It looks good. Excellent. Yeah. Great. I think Roxanne was really enthusiastic today. She needs to give her a confidence up a bit. But what I really, really wanted to show her today was the reality of being a personal shopper because the more Roxanne enters into real world rather than her fantasy world of magazines, the better off she's going to be and the quicker her debt's going to get paid back. Inspired by her day as a personal shopper, Roxanne wastes no time looking for work. I was just wondering if you've got any um, weekend uh, vacancies. Within 24 hours, she's found herself a Saturday job. It'll give her the experience she needs to make her dream of working in fashion retail a reality. There's that one there. It's got all the pockets. That's £20. It's got that small sort of handbag strap. As well as using her extensive knowledge of bags, there's the added bonus of a pay packet. I absolutely loved it. I really enjoyed it. As soon as I got in there, I felt comfortable and I knew what I was doing. Um, and I made my first sale, which I was really pleased about. I know that that is what I want to do now. It's the beginning of her last week, and with her newfound energy for work, Roxanne's also taking positive steps to change at home. I'm cooking some tea for Esther, because she's always looking after me and um, occasionally cooking for me, or buying me takeaways and things when they're having them. So I thought I'd just, you know, thought it'd be nice to do something for her for a change. Hello. <laughs> all right. Hello. You've got a spag ball, is that all right? That's fab, yeah. Just any food is fab. <laughs> <laughs> Looks lovely. I've noticed a marked difference in Roxanne. She's more respectful. She's more understanding of what people do for her and have tried to do for her. She seems more grown up more than anything else. There you go. She wants to change herself, which has been the biggest thing, and realises she's not tied to her debt so much that she can't change her life. She's started to realise that she can make significant changes that are going to make her a happier and more fulfilled person at the end of the day. Four weeks ago, Roxanne was living in a fantasy world. Addicted to Hollywood fashion and celebrity websites, she was 14 grand in debt and heading for financial meltdown. Since then, lifestyle expert Jay Hunt has shown her some clever ways of getting the Hollywood look without blowing the budget. The obvious thing is to swap them for a pair of shoes that bloody fit. And given her a taste of a potential new career. I know that that is what I want to do. Psychological coach Benjamin Fry has made her address the reasons behind her compulsive spending. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. No. It's really hard, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> And he's helped her enjoy a more open relationship with her family. <laughs> <laughs>
towards the end that bad. And you did say goodbye anyway. Okay. I don't really feel like I have said goodbye. I didn't say goodbye when I left on that morning. So you wish you'd had said goodbye? Yeah. In a way that was final and meant something. What do you think I could do about that? Come on over the other side, Roxanne. Maybe I could, um, you could, <laughs> um, scatter the ashes. That might help in a way. It might help me sort of move on, help you move on. OK. So you'd be happy with anything that helped Roxanne? Yeah. Be OK with you. Roxanne decides to scatter her mum's ashes in the Cornish seaside town of Bude, where they had their last holiday together. I feel a bit nervous, really, about um, actually letting mum go um, again, really. I didn't really think it was a big deal, but suddenly I sort of feel as though it is. Um, so I'm a bit unsure whether I actually want to anymore. I don't know how much sleep I'll get tonight. So, yeah, I suppose I've got the rest of the night until tomorrow morning to think about it. Still unsure, Roxanne heads for Bude to meet Benjamin. I'm hoping that I'll feel better for it, maybe a bit more positive and um, a bit more ready to sort of carry on with my own life. But I think I'll still be really quite upset. Hi, Roxanne. Hello, you are right? How are you doing? I'm OK, thank nice you. Nice to see you. How are you? Oh, not too bad, yeah, um, yeah. I got a bit choked on the way down in the car, just remembering bits where we've been with Mum yeah. and that, so... But it's nice. It's it you know, nice. nicer memories, so. OK. Well, I think that's really interesting because that is kind of the two sides of what we're doing today. There's a difference between a funeral and a memorial. Funeral is very difficult, very yeah. shocking. It's a time when you really get used to the idea that someone's gone. And a memorial maybe comes later when you remember their life, yeah. not their death. Whereabouts here would you hang out with? Um, mostly around here, by the rocks yeah. and things, really, yeah. But the whole place is very evocative for you, it has really yeah. strong memories. Yeah. Feels right. Yeah. Feel ready to let go. Yeah, definitely. It's clear how hard Roxanne found that to do. Even though she was here and she was ready to do it, still, come the moment, it was tremendously difficult. This is an important step forward to letting go of her mother, but not letting go of the memories, just letting go of the grief of losing her. I think it could really help her to have gone through this ritual, and that should help her move on in her life in many areas, including her spending. Well done, Roxanne. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming with me as well. Oh, you're welcome. It's a pleasure. It's over a month since Roxanne Russell put the brakes on her substantial spending habit. Now she's come to meet Jay and Benjamin to assess how life on her new restricted budget's been treating her. Did you think it was going to be as hard as it's been? No, no, not at all. I, I thought it'd be pretty easy, really, most of it, but it, it has. I've been through quite a lot, really, mm. um, surprisingly, in such a short space of time. Last time I saw you, it was a very intense day, 
How did you get on after that? Just I felt really weird yeah. and just still really upset and everything um, all the way home. Mm -hmm. But then a couple of days later, I did start to feel a bit more normal and a bit more mm -hmm. positive and, you know, better, really. I feel like I've almost sort of um, left her there on mm -hmm. holiday in Bude, really, That's when we nice. were all last happy. So it's quite weird, but I feel like she's still there and, you know, enjoying mm -hmm. a holiday. How have you been getting on with not spending? Because obviously, if you have those days where you are feeling a bit down, that's going to be where yeah. the temptation hits, um, isn't it? I did go to the shopping centre once with my sister, okay. um, but I just kept picking things up and touching them and then putting them back. <laughs> and I've started going out a lot more as well, um, socialising. Oh, that's good. Um, so that's good, yeah, yeah. The more you can, you know, use your new budget and the socialising money that we've put there to get out and about yeah. with real friends, the better that's going to be. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I do feel much more positive and a bit happier. Like, even my sister said how different I seem, oh. um, how I seem much more positive and a bit more friendly. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. <laughs> how much has that changed your relationship with Esther? Quite a lot, actually, yeah. It's not really like, like she's mothering me anymore. I don't go to her and say, oh, I'm broke or anything like that. Yeah. Um, it is more like uh, she's my friend. Yeah, I have this real sense that you've taken a step forward, essentially, in kind of, you know, not to be patronising but kind of growing up yeah there is something about letting go of that very very difficult feelings and emotions and even the ashes that has yeah. brought you right up to date yeah, you seem definitely. to have just suddenly blossomed into your true young adult self yeah I do feel much different I feel um, more positive and like I'm looking forward to sort of moving on and um, starting my own sort of future really